Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at Jay Wanderl on the Make Code Forums. I'm Shannon at Shakao on the Make Code Forums. And I'm Vivian at Liftroof on the Make Code Forums. All right. And today's a very special stream, you guys, because it's the penul penultimate, oh. penultimate stream. Stream that number 99. Shannon's was the ultra penultimate one, and we didn't even celebrate it. Yeah. It's a missed opportunity, but anyway, um, because this is such a special stream, we're going to do the least special kind of stream and do a game idea generator game, because um, I didn't think of anything beforehand. So um, if you've seen us before, we made this in our 10th stream. It's a game idea generator. If I press this A button, it's going to choose things. So this would be like make a side scroller game that's educational, set in underwater, and featuring multiplayer. Woo! Sounds fun. Anyway, we're going to just keep doing this until we find one we like, and someone's going to keep track of these as we're going so that we can kind of choose the best one at the end. Um, so yeah, let's get started. All right, make a fast platformer set in the future featuring random levels. I like this one. I like random levels. And also I like that we can speculate about what the future will be like. Mm -hmm. All right, make a surreal narrative set in space featuring a moral dilemma Ooh. the mass effect option make a deserted historical game set in the tundra oh. featuring the tundra? desert it's a deserted dessert game <clears throat> um does anyone know any history about the tundra um there's bears there i don't know where the tundra is is that is that the cold one or the barren one the cold one both maybe yeah i guess it is <laughs> cold and barren where where Canada is the tundra in. like canada yeah well canada i think most of canada is like taiga i know like, some canada histories like more north yeah all right it. let's do one more and then we'll um choose from what we've seen so far monochrome platformer set in ruins featuring random Ooh. levels this sounds Ooh, like okay great. So I think we're between monochrome platformers set in ruins with random levels and the other platformers set in the future featuring random levels. The future could have the ruins of today. Moral dilemma. <laughs> right, there was also the surreal space narrative with moral dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> I think That's we should do all of it together. <laughs> all right, Joe, you know, what's your favorite? That could work if we did all of them together. Fast platformer within the future with random levels. That is a surreal narrative space moral dilemma. <laughs> uh, I like the fast platformer personally. Shannon? Um, I like the idea of tackling a moral dilemma, but I feel like we could fit a moral dilemma into most things. So I'm willing to do, um, willing to also go in on one of the random levels ones. Okay, Vivian? My vote was for anything with a moral dilemma because I really want to come up with a moral dilemma. <laughs> All right, we'll do a platformer and if you you guys can, you know, come up with some ideas for what a moral dilemma might be. Yeah. Uh, All right, so let's get started by just making the player. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I kind of want to do a tile map that's eight by eight. Tiles. Ooh. Can we do uh, that now? Well, I'm in beta, so we can, but we don't have a block for it yet. So I'm going to have to make a block real quick. Okay. Cool. I've never seen this done before. Very exciting. Thanks. Don't worry, the JavaScript will end soon. We'll go back to blocks. Mm -hmm. No, this is perfect content for our penultimate stream. Ooh. Something new but also something old. Now let's make a blue monochrome and it will be a perfect wedding of make code. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going into the game package and I'm just gonna steal the definition for the existing tile map. Everything? Um, I just want this guy. And we're gonna go back to my thing.
And um, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, add an extra line, which is going to be tilemap.fieldoptions.tile width equals eight. And I think it should do it. Just go back to main.ts, go back to blocks, and might have oh, right. to refresh. Oh. Or, oh, it will be. Will it be? Ooh. Yeah, here it is. Uh, let me make it so the block looks visually different. So set tile map eight to tile map. Uh, okay, maybe I do need to refresh. Ah, I don't know what's happening. Our parentheses. Uh, parentheses. The block ID. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Block ID. Oh, you're right. There we go. All right, cool. So this is just like our other set time map block, but when I click this, um, there's nothing in the gallery because we're doing eight by eight tiles and we don't have any of those built in. But I can go ahead and create one. And unlike our normal thing, this is only. Um, well, let me open that back up. This um, is only eight by eight. And you can see when I go down here at the bottom, you can see in the bottom left, it's seven by seven. Um, <laughs> and cool. Yeah. All right. So let's just make some tiles. I'm going to do um, these are tiles based off of a, a prototype game I made a while ago. Um, but I've always liked how the tiles ended up looking. Um, so might as well reuse them here. Do you already have a setting in mind? A world? No, no. Do you have a suggestion? Um, no, I just have a list of world dilemmas. Um, <laughs> but I was going to shape them to fit the world that you picked. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, this is supposed to be monochrome. Uh, monochrome was the other one. Yeah. Oh, uh, whatever. Could be monochrome. <laughs> Makes it easier to draw anyway. Cool. Now let's make some uh, ground or something that looks kind of solid. I think I'm going to do a triangle block like we did the other day. Very stable. That's yeah, true. They are the most stable. Whoops. And I did this backwards. <laughs> So do you want to do you want to preview some moral dilemmas for us? Sure, yeah. Um, OK, I'm just going to go through this list and we can see. Um, item number one is enemies tell you about their families when you attack them. Um, one step down from that is enemies say, this could cost me my job when you attack them. Um, and then maybe the option to like, um, have like a pacifist versus like um, attack sort of run. So like whether you attack people changes something about like the future level spawns. Um, and then the last one is, I don't know, maybe there's NPCs that you can help and it costs you in some way. I like the, um, maybe we make it so that the enemies don't attack you unless you attack them. Um, but then yeah. they do. And it's Sorry? like a problem. Yeah. And also, they should remember if you've attacked other ones of them in the past. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. Here's a little time map. Um, let's go ahead and create our character. This character is not going to be the character I'd normally do for this because it takes too long to animate. <laughs> but we're just going to do a little guy. Let's. Give him a space helmet because this is the future. True. Cool. 
it's going to be weird. Wait, but Shannon, why is this a dilemma? It seems like the obvious choice is to not attack. Why are we attacking? Um, enemies dropped loot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Does a moral dilemma mean both options have to or make you like the good person? Or can one of them be like, you're the good person, the other one's like, you're bad? And I guess what defines a moral dilemma? Um, I mean, it's just like you you uh, have something that you would do that would be better for you, but would be worse for the world mm. or um, but you want to do it, I guess. Mm, I see. Yeah. Or like, okay. I don't know, some, something where there's like no clear good choice sometimes, um, you know, like the, the trolley problem thing. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe it's like, should we get rid of animals because they bring pain onto each other because they don't understand each other? <laughs> I don't know how that's a game. <laughs> All right, here's oh, our so player, cute. little space guy. Um, let's go ahead and define some gravity. So we'll do gravity. We're going to set gravity to be, I don't know, we want it to be fast, right? I'm going to make it really high. And we're going to set the AY. Oh, whoops, not gravity. We want to set the player's AY um, to be equal to this gravity. And positive is down. So this should work. Oop. Oh, All right. Now um, we're going to make a function. It's going to be called do a... Uh, Jump. It's going to take in a sprite, and I think it's going to take in a height. Are we going to do math again? Yep. So this will be some quick math. But what we're going to do is we're going to say um, if, no, they're not going to say if. We're just going to do the jump in here, I think. Um, so we're going to set the sprite. UI. There's a lot of noise on someone's mic. I think it might be you, Joey. To the square root of two times the height times gravity. And for gravity, we can just read the um, a a y of the sprite. Joey muted himself, and I thought that was me muting myself because I had thought Joey's noise was my noise, and I was like, "Soup!" I was like, "Whoa!" Uh, the local sprite, right? For sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's do um, on A button pressed, we'll do a jump. And for height, let's make it so you can jump up three tiles. So that would be three times eight, it's 24. Is this fast enough? Looks really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. There we go. I like that. Okay. And then we're also going to move the player with buttons, but we're going to not do anything in the y direction. So we'll set that to be zero, and we'll set vx to be 100. That's pretty fast. No, faster. Maybe as we're going fast along the platform, we see somebody and we're like, should we stop for this person? You really gotta go fast, but this goes against like the whole point of the game. Oh yeah, I like the idea that like helping or something would like slow you down. Ooh. Maybe uh, it's faster to kill. <laughs> I don't want to do killing. Let's let's mm. not do any violent mechanics in this game. Um, 
<laughs> maybe you walk by and there's like a bird and an egg outside of the nest and you're like I could help this bird or I could just keep going and get a better time mm. something like that maybe it's like you're trying to escape lava or something and you pick up the bird and it makes you slower but maybe once the lava is about to engulf you you find out the bird brings you a new power and you can fly <laughs> or something <laughs> Yeah, we could make it a, have a payoff, a secret payoff. Mm. Okay. So normally when we do these kind of platformer games, we do like a shooting mechanic. But I'm not going to do that today because we want this to be nonviolent. So instead, I'm going to do the classic, you jump up, and when you hit a block with your head, it's going to break. So that sounds like fun. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some things for me to break. We can jump up three. So that should be the right height. Not this one. And I'm going to say that these um, pyramid-type blocks are going to be ground, and they'll, they will not be breakable. But these just weirdo ones, which I'm going to edit right now, actually. These ones will be breakable when you hit them with your head. Mm -hmm. All right, so in order to break the block, we're going to need a scene. Um, on sprite of kind player hits wall at location. And then what we're going to do is we're going to first check to make sure that we're hitting something with our head. So we're going to go into scene, grab a is hitting wall in direction block. And we'll set it to top. And then what we want to do is we want to check to see if that block is something we can break or not. Um, so to make this easier, I'm going to go ahead and add um, a uh, extension we use quite often, which is Microsoft slash PXT dash tile maps, which gives you a lot of extra things for working with tile maps. Um, and the thing it's going to let us do is check the block that is directly above us. So actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if I actually need that. I think I can do that inside of scene. Yep, here we go. So if tile to top of the player is this, then we want to destroy it. And so what we're going to do in that case is we will set to the background at that location. And we're also going to turn off the wall there. Mm. So that kind of works. Not super well, though. Um, the reason why is because uh, um when we this this tile to top block um only does the tile directly above us so if we kind of hit it on the edge this this block here is actually checking this tile and not this one so it doesn't end up getting broken um so let's see what we can do to fix that i think the easiest thing to do is because our character is eight pixels by eight pixels we can just put a test sprite on either side of them, mm -hmm. and then we can check both of them and um, break the block that way. I think you so, have, um, does tile maps have a tile at location is? It does, but we can't always check left and right because like this case, I need to be checking this one and this one, but not this one. But the, um, shouldn't the wall be the wall location or is it? Yeah, but like, so if I'm hitting the wall here, and there was another wall here, then if I were to do that method, I would hit oh. this one, and then it would break this one. I see, I see, yeah. Yeah. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some little um, collision sprites. Um, and 
it's going to be kind of annoying, but it's not that bad because I only need to do it for the player. Let's make this the color that shows up. Red. Alright, so we're calling them collision one, collision two. We're going to change the kind to be something else. Whoops, don't need to add a new kind because I just did. And what we want to do now is inside of an on game update, we want to make sure that these guys are always at the right location. Um, and it's easy to set their location because it's just going to be the top left and the top right of our player. So collision one, I'm going to give these better names. Collision left. Collision right. <laughs> okay. The player left top to the player top. Now I do the same thing for the right one, but with right instead of left. All right, here we go. We got a little space ears now. Mm -hmm. um, so with these guys, instead of doing the tile to top of the player, um, what we're going to do instead is tile to the top of collision left and collision right. So we're going to do this twice. Um, so let's do collision left here. And um, we can't use the location now. Instead, what we want to do is the... Um, tile to the top of the location of collision left. So we're going to grab this block, this block, and we're going to do location top of the location of collision left, and the same thing right here. And now we will duplicate this. and do the same thing for right. All right. Cool. So that works. So fast. OK. So that's all we need for our little uh, block, uh, block breaking mechanic. The other thing we could do, which might be fun, is doing a little effect when it breaks. Um, oh, and also I should probably get rid of these space ears. So right now they're showing up because I made them red. They need to have some sort of color or else they won't show up. Um, but I don't want them to actually be drawn to the screen. So um, all I'm going to do is set a flag on them. So I'm going to say collision left. And we're going to say uh, invisible on. Do the same thing. Whoops. Do the same thing for collision right. And we should have the same behavior, but now they won't be drawn. There we go. Cool. All right. What to do next? So our basic idea is that this is going to be some sort of race game, or you're trying to get through the level as quick as possible. Um, but there will be moral dilemmas that you can either choose to um, go and help or ignore along the way. Um, and we'll have a few different examples of that. But um, for now, let's get the, uh, the the race side of things. Does that sound good? Yeah. We're racing. OK. So this is, um, do you want to race up or sideways? We can do both, but for the first level, should I go up or sideways? 
sideways. And I'll speak out. Okay. Because because of the block breaking. You could also do block breaking up though, right? It seems like it'd be easier sideways. Like like it's easier to mess up. Okay, so maybe that'll be the, the advanced <laughs> level. All right, so the nice thing about an 8x8 tile map is that normally we don't fit perfectly in the um, height direction because 16 does not go into 120, but 8 does, um, and it's 15. So if I make this 15, oh, whoops, and I don't accidentally quit, quit out. Um, I don't know, that's the width. I want to make the height 15. So this will now fit perfectly in our screen and we will see all of these tiles. One of the reasons I like using 8x8 tile maps. Um, and now I'm going to go and erase some stuff. Let's go to my tiles, go here, and make our thing bigger. And we're going to get rid of our walls too. And let's make this tile map really long. Whoa. Whoops, I did it again. You said really long. You meant it. Yeah. All right. And let's define our ground. And it's probably too thick for ground. How many layers are in the Earth's crust? I don't remember this. At That's least three. Shannon, a Shannon question. Shannon, you know that? No. Oh, I know there's what? There's like the mantle and then the crust and then the core. Right? Some mantle. Hmm? Some mantle. Some mantle. Some mantle. That sounds like it could be a thing. <laughs> I believe it's a thing. <laughs> At Whoa. Least three. That's oh. oh. I think I pressed um, undo a bunch of times somehow. <laughs> File that bug. There we go. Oh, I know what happened. I held down space as I was panning, but the the um undo still had focus so it pressed undo a bunch of times um okay so we're going to define two tiles right now that are going to be special tiles and they're going to be where we start and where we stop so for the end i think it's going to be a little flag yes i really want to play capture the flag i feel like it's been at least a decade since I've last played. Capture the flag was hard. Yeah, that one's like hide and seek meets like tag, right? Mm-hmm. We used to More play at less. night. That seems dangerous. It was awesome. Oh, I think it was like, wait, was flashlight tag a thing too? Flashlight tag was a thing, but I don't think it actually involved flashlights. What? It totally did. Did it? It's like you get you're caught if the flashlight sees you, or our version was. What was yours? Um, I think it was basically freeze tag. Oh. What's freeze tag? It's been so long since I've thought of this. Um, freeze tag was when you tag somebody, they're frozen, and someone who is running around, I think, could tag someone again, and then they would be unfrozen. And there's only one person who's it. Yes. I think it was something like that. That's vanilla tag. I should know that. Yeah, I think we used to do capture the flag plus flashlight tag, so if you got seen with the flashlight, you had to go back. really want to do this. We also used to play bike tag, where we would tag each other while riding our bikes, which seems very dangerous in hindsight. <laughs> with your hands or tag with the no, bikes? No, we would knock our bikes into each other. To <laughs> yep. Once again, don't listen to anything we say. I'm just 
saying history. <laughs> I'm not saying you should play this. I guess that's true. All right. So let's go ahead and pan on back over. And we're also going to do a start tile. Um, and I don't know what that's going to look like. Maybe like a little launch pad. Oh, yes. Ugh. This bug's getting on my nerves. All right. And let's do some quick level design, I think. Um, so I think the fun thing here is the, the um, one, making jumps. So I think that we're going to need some sort of dangerous tile so that there's something to jump over. Um, and any idea of what, what the thing should be? Should it be spikes? Spikes are classic, but maybe it's something that makes you slower because we aren't doing pain. Could be like a um, geyser, you know, like on Mars, they have like the little like, it's like a circle and it shoots hot steam out of it. <laughs> I cannot even begin to think about how to draw that. <laughs> Um, I'm all for making something that makes you slow, but I feel like it should be goopy, and I don't know how to draw that. Mm. Maybe it could be dripping on the sides with black stuff. Or, like, yeah, I guess it's hard to make round things out of squares. It's true. It's the classic mm. problem. Okay, let's do this. Now let's try and see if we can do something that's kind of goopy. Mm. Spider webs are goopy. Mm, I touched a spider web the other day and it was gross. Changing my stance on spiders. I do not want them inside. Nope, not enough pixels. Hmm. Maybe it should be colored because then you know it's bad. Nothing else in this world is colored except. Oh, does that mean we're bad then? Yep. Danger time. Okay. So you need to jump over these because if you're on these. We're going to set your speed to be slow until you land on another normal block. All right, so let's do that real quick. All right. So um, first thing we want to do is we want to um, put ourselves on the start when we start the level. So I'm just going to create a function that's called start level. And the first thing that's going to do is place you on top of a random that tile. All right. Next, we are going to go to our on uh, hit wall thing and we're going to add another case um and it's going to be is hitting wall bottom mm -hmm. and if it is then what we're going to do is make you slow so we don't need this because we're not changing we're not changing anything so go to these um, and what we're going to do is we're going to check the bottom of the collision left and collision right. We're going to see if it's our slow tile. And if it is, then we're going to call controller move and we're going to pass in a slow speed. Real slow. 
Um, and this is where I refactor my code a little bit, and I'm going to grab an OR block. I thought it was an artistic choice to have two ifs that were going to do the same thing. Yeah. OK. Otherwise, if it's not either of those, we want to move with our fast speed, which was 150. Oh, wait, I need to make the camera follow the player. Slow enough? Should be slower, you think? Question. Go back to the goop. Still be... I think it could be slower. All right. <laughs> we can make it so you can't jump as high either. Oh, that's good. All right, I'm going to make a variable. It is slow. And here we're going to set is slow to be true. We don't need to set it in the beginning because it will default to false, which is right. And here we're going to set it to be false. And now we want to go over to our on a button breast. And normally you can jump 24, but I think what we're going to do is if is slow, we will make it so you can only jump um, One block less, which will be 16. Um, one other thing I need to do real quick is right now we can infinite jump. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Yeah, we need to fix that. Um, so that's easy. Um, in this case, we can just check to see if we are um, hitting a wall um, to the bottom. So do this. I think next moral dilemma game we should make should be a game where you can infinitely jump but the player knows that they shouldn't. <laughs> I'm disappointed in myself. We'll just be like the say bubble that shows up as you do that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, nice. All right, cool. So these feel very punishing. So let's go to um, here, and we're going to make just some, some kind of um, jump areas, I think. So we'll do this. Feels really bad. I can't make um, this go up. This is no good because um, this would be impossible to get out of because I lowered the the jump speed. So we need to make sure that we um, only make it so that if you are in one of these traps, you can't jump. Um, uh, you don't need to jump more than two blocks to get out of them. Okay. Let's see how that goes. Ugh, all right. Ooh. Can I make this? Is this a makeable jump? Ugh. Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> I think the take other skill. thing to do. Oh, sorry. I said take skill. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can you make it so that you can't jump? Um, the the forward side of the trap is too tall for you to jump from, so you have to go back. Oh, that works. Oh. So in that case, I'm going to make this a little bit shorter because I definitely can't make it if it's one block higher. And I'll leave this one as you can just jump out of it. Um, I feel like Shannon's really punishing the player for not being good at the game. Make it slower. One I mean, you can, you're, you're not losing or anything. You can just keep going. You'll just have a bad time. <laughs> Richard's punishing the player. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Precision. 
No. Oh, you have to be exactly on the tile, too, because we check both sides. Of oh, yeah, you're right. I'll, I'll make it a little friendlier. <laughs> Show you, so make it for the player. Watching out for the common person. Um, one other thing, the pan does not work with the space bar when you're in wall mode or something. It, it was being weird to me just then. I'll read it down. Um, all right, cool. Now, we haven't done any block breaking yet, so I want to do that real quick. Um, so we're going to make it so that this is probably like a little um, overhang type area. And we're going to put in some blocks that you have to break to get past. Not done yet, though. This is great because it slows you down. Yep, and we gotta go fast. Oh no, what's what's gonna happen? Okay, so I think that what we need to do is we'll put this here. You can jump here, hit that, and then you should be able to get up on top of here. Oh. So we'll do it like that. And if you break both of these blocks, it'll be annoying because you'll have to jump, hit it, and then come down, and then come back up, and then get up. Um, and then I need to make this like that um, so that it's possible. So in your haste, you made waste of the blocks you needed. Exactly. It's really a moral lesson for the player. <laughs> we need some pro. Is okay. Is it proverbs or proverbs? Proverbs. I don't know what I was going to say. But. All right. And kind of don't really know what to do for this last section, so we're just going to leave it for now. And we'll get back to the programming part of the game. But let's make sure that we can actually finish this real quick. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Yeah. Yeah, this feels really bad when you mess it up. <laughs> cool. Okay. So now we want to um, do the finish level. So, um, and we also need to do a timer. Um, let's do the timer first. So for the timer, um, I'm going to go ahead and use a text sprite. So that is Darzu slash text sprite. Text sprites? Arcade Zach Arcade text. text. Oh, yeah. There we go. This is a nice little extension that lets you um, create uh, uh, sprites that, that draw to the, to the um, screen with uh, words and stuff. Um, so I'm going to create a text sprite right here. And just to see what it looks like, I'm going to put in a fake time right now. Eight o'clock. That's, um, that's a little bit too big. So I think we're going to put in the max font height of eight. Um, I want to give this a background. So we're going to make this, I think, black on white. Um, and we're going to give it a border so that it's not like right up on it. So we're going to make it a border of like four pixels, um, white. Too big. One pixel white. Um, I'm going to set a flag on it because right now it's um, in the world, so it's going to move around, which we don't want. We want it to be stuck to the top of the screen. So I'm going to set the flag uh, relative to camera. 
to be on. And I'm also going to set ghost to be on. Though I think that relative to camera also takes care of that behavior, but whatever. Um, and let's uh, create a function, which is going to be update timer. Um, all right, so we need to count the time since the game started or the level started. So I'm going to set this um, start level thing. I'm going to set a uh, variable that's going to be called level start time right here. And um, inside of the game category, we have a time since start. So I can put that there. And now we can figure out how many milliseconds have passed by taking this time since start and subtracting level start time from it. So I'm going to make another variable. It's going to be called elapsed time. And we're going to do some math real quick. Time since start minus level start time. And now we want to set the text of this text sprite. Um, so we can do that using this block. Um, and for here, we're going to need a join. And this will let us convert it into a number. I mean, a number into a string. I mean, for now, I'm just going to print it out. We'll do some formatting in a second. All right, and let's call this inside of our game update. Look at it go. All right, the other thing I'm going to do is that because this is changing size, I think we also want to make sure that we set the position in here too. Um, and I'm just going to set the position to be halfway through the screen. So that's going to be X of 80. Um, and then near the top, so let's set Y to be like 10. Yeah, that looks okay. All right, so I don't think we need millisecond precision on this guy. Um, I think that it's more useful just to see the, the um, number of seconds. Um, so in order to do that, we're just going to use our um, integer divide function, which is a useful one for things like this. I'm going to divide the integer to divide by, I mean, divide the last time by 1,000. This will just print out the seconds. Cool, now I got this timer. Doesn't look very exciting though, to be honest. Um, but there's a nice way to um, fix that. And it's going to be, um, we're going to print out, I think, the two decimal points after this. Um, so it'll be like 18 dot and then some numbers that are changing really fast. And even though those numbers don't really matter, it'll look like it's changing really fast and it'll make you feel more hectic. And I just like timers that print out that way. I think it's very important for our game that it feels hectic. I'm glad you're doing this. All right, so to do that, um, we want to first chop off this part that we've already gotten. And to do that, we can just use um, the remainder block. So let me grab the remainder block in here. And we're going to do the um, remainder of this divided by 1,000. So this will give us everything that is before the 1,000 place, whereas this gives us everything that is after it. So I can put that right there. And we'll see what it looks like. Cool. So this is interesting. Why is it going in and out? Oh, I know. Because um, when it's zero, it gets slopped off at the front. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to fix that real quick. And for that, I'm going to say milli chunk. And we're going to set millichunk to be equal to this string. Um, and I'm going to use a while loop. So let's grab this right here. 
and a text length block. And we're going to say while the text length of the millichunk is less than three, we're going to set millichunk to millichunk joined with a zero. This will format our text so that it's always three digits. Wait, shouldn't the zero be after millichunk? No, it should no. be at the beginning, right? Maybe I don't know what's being printed. What am I doing wrong here, though? Because this isn't working. Um, is it because you're, oh, you're printing out? Oh, yeah. Um, so we want the zero to be at the beginning because it'll be dot zero 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 and not dot zero. Otherwise, if it was dot nine, then it would be dot nine zero zero, which is not the right okay. amount. Oh, if it, I see. I'm sorry, if it was zero zero nine, then you know it would not print out the right way. Mm -hmm. So let's just grab this milli chunk, put it here. Cool. Um, I don't. I think it's too much detail though still, so I'm going to chop off another 10, the 10 space. Um, so I'm going to grab another integer divide, put this inside here, inside here. Whoops, where did my join go? And we're going to integer divide by 10 to chop off the last digit place and change this to be 2. Cool, now I've got a nice timer. All right, we're running out of time here, but I think maybe we should come back to this game. I don't know. Seems like it might be a fun one to come back to, um, but I'll leave it to whoever's streaming. I think tomorrow is gonna be a very special stream. So we'll um, probably not be doing it tomorrow, but maybe the next day. Um, so or we could now, have a game with a hundred moral dilemmas. Yeah, could also do that. All moral dilemmas. <laughs> um, so for now, let's go ahead and just set the um, uh, end state. So it's going to be um, on overlap with the flag. If we don't come back to it, I'll finish it because this seems like a fun game so far. And we'll just do game over when. Um, but first, we'll do a splash. And um, I think we're going to just do this. And it should be accurate because these variables have already been updated. Uh, Shannon, this was a very punishing idea. There we go. <laughs> nice. 19.4. That's the number to beat, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and this will be a fun game to do level design for, so I'll at least do some more levels for it. But all right, um, that's it for today. Um, I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at Jay Wanderl on the Make Code Forum. I'm Shannon at Chacal on the Make Code Forums. And I'm Vivian. I love Triple on the Make Code Forums. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs>